Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 72 of Forgecraft 2. Soren! Hello! Are you still cheating with solars? Uh, now we're kind of having issues with conduits. Uh-oh, what'd you break? No, you updated the server earlier. That's I didn't broke. update the server. You changed the server. And I did nothing. You did it. Uh, you can't prove anything. I defer you to your last episode. <laughs> I did not do it. Player did it. Lame player. Lame when player. in doubt. When in doubt, lame player. I don't want to do that. He's standing right next to me. <laughs> <gasps> Maybe don't blame player. He's right there. I don't want to blame. Shh. Don't blame player. I blame. Yay. Uh, guess what I'm setting up, Soren? Uh, you mad a replicator? Uh, no. Dang. I'm setting up my second. Uh, my... Oh, right, Ender. Derp. Uh, my second steam reactor. Nice. Yeah, I want two. I decided I want two, so now I'm making two. So you will extract hot coolant, always active, and you will insert cold coolant. Cool. And you might need to break this. Does that do terrible things? It kind of does. There we go, all fixed. Um, so you're going to need to tap into this line. So this is the coolant line, right? Yes. So we're going to want you to tap into that. Wait till T Love sees the wiring mess that I made under here. He will never build a two block tall room again if I have anything to say about it. <laughs> Ever. I, I think he will and have the exact same complaint, but you know. I mean, I feel like he will never do it again. I'll build a square room and have the exact grid laid out for you. But you know what? Dyer will never place off-centered. What does he do every single time? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So now for this, you need to insert quad fuel rods. Insert on purple, extract on blue. Insert on purple, extract on blue. Insert extract. Do we have any more advanced filters? Well, we're going to see if I can make one. Yay, I can. Put you guys in here for the moment. Um, so the way this is configured. Insert purple advanced extract quad. Insert purple advanced you ignoring these guys extract always active this guy. Cool. So in theory then I should be able to just hook this directly up to this guy. And you should get nice. Okay, cool. Very cool. That's what I wanted to see. Beautiful. So that means that should be working. And in theory, if this were to become one of these, it should get pulled out and swapped out with that thing. Cool. You know, eventually. There we go. Refresh. That's all. Nice. All right. So that's good. Um, so I'm building my second reactor pressure vessel. This thus far is pretty functional. We're going to want two more fluid monitors and I'm going to want to build the um, the other thing that I made last time. 
Yay, there's two. Cool. So I'm going to want you, and I'm going to want you. Now the left side does what? That is more than 95. The right side is less than 10. More than 95. And less than 10. And then we're gonna want some super, super circuit maker time. So we're probably gonna want a redstone circuit and then we're gonna want redstone you and torches. Is that really all the torches I have? No, I have more. Okay, I thought so. All right, so how did I do this thing again? Oh, it's basically just an RSMR latch. Okay, that's easy enough. Connected to an AND gate. So we're gonna pop this dude down, and just because I love playing with Super Circuit Maker, we're gonna do it live. So remember, shift right click for inputs. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. And just, I wanna make sure that, oh geez, that thing is huge. That is not cool. Hey, go away, slime. Nobody invited you. Do you happen to know if the Aversion Obelisk works on slimes? I kind of hope that it does, but it uses a lot of power. Uh, only if you use a large range. Yeah, okay. Cool. So it should, if you put it lower and just put it in the middle of your base, it should be fine. I had that problem with my base too. So reading on the bottom is on the right. So reading on the bottom is on the right. So that. To that. Then we're going to want another circuit board. So it's going to connect right there. Nice. Cool. Now, how did I have this set up? This is basically just an AND gate, right? So it's two torches reading in to a knot. Cool. That should be easy peasy. So this. Two torches. Look at how awesome that is. Reading into a knot. That's what we want, right? Uh, and then we're going to want insulated redstone conduit, which will not connect back here. Okay, you're just gonna circle back like that. And I have that one space away. So if we were to have a facade, I don't have any facades of that type, but that's okay, we'll get it eventually. Um, so you break the connection, nice. We'll facade this dude, we'll put a lever on him. I think we're done with these for now, right? And the best part about using conduits is I can make sure they don't connect like that. Beautiful, right? How cool is that? Um, and then if I want... What do I want? The miniature lamp? For debug, yeah. For like the debug thing, right? And what's the glowstone exciter do? It's random. So think of the old randomizer. If you send a signal to it, it will be either on or off until you get the next signal in. And then it may or may not change. Gotcha. So it just changes state every time a new pulse. Now, why are you not working? Oh, that's right, that should be a read. There we go, perfect. It doesn't really need to be strong signal. It probably doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter, cool. So that means that you are also going to be a read on this torch. More more Sometimes forget to do that. There. That's why we put the debugger in there, the little glowstone thingy, to make sure it's working. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, cool. 
That's awesome. Full stuffs. I think redstone as well. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm muted. <laughs> What'd you do? Screen cap. I, I'm muted by accident. My bad. Have you found that when you're placing the super circuits down sometimes, they like decide, when you're placing like redstone torches especially, like instead of the redstone torch going on the circuit, it goes on the block like above it? Yes. Okay. That's if you place it and there is a valid spot above it when you do. Right. Okay. I'm guessing he knows about that. Yeah, I told him and he was like, oh yeah, I'll oh, do yeah. that later. So this should activate the reactor. Oh, right, dirt. <laughs> Come on, break. Thank you. So we're going to say disabled north input output. Doesn't need the strong signal. And this can be disabled. That should be running now. Then it should automatically turn off when it runs out of cold coolant. Oh, wait, it won't do that. Hold on. Stop. Right, because we're... All right, yeah. Um, you should be extracting. But your hot coolant has nowhere to go at this moment. Yes, that is part of the problem. Why don't you have anywhere to go out of curiosity? You should have somewhere to go. Why are you not going anywhere? Hot coolant. Extract. Always active. Hot coolant. Ah, that's why. <laughs> mm -hmm. ah. Right. So you should probably not be connected to this line. You should instead be connected to this line, which is the reactor line. That's right, I split them into two different lines, so that makes sense that that would do that. So I'll just run this along here. And then hot coolant should empty out. Correct. Cool. And it should feed in from here. So basically, if we turn this on now, the hot coolant should get emptied out. The cold coolant will dip because we'll like run out. That's cool, 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 cool. We're just testing all the things. Next up, by the way, is making the the heat, the, the steam generator stuff. But we'll get to that in a minute. So at some point, this should automatically shut off. Are you not shutting off? This is what we're testing this for. I think I know what I forgot to do. No, you're reading, you're reading, you're off. Oh good, it did turn off, nice. It did turn off, that's cool. And then it's gonna turn back on. Nice, no, we're good, we're good, we're good. All right, you're off again. And everybody's good. All right, um, so we've got a functioning second reactor, fully automated in terms of uh, uranium going in and out, coolant going in and out, feeding into the barrels, okay? Um, and the only thing left to do, um, I'm gonna turn you off for a minute. Yoink. We're making you matter like crazy, which is pretty much what our goal is. Hey, where's all the scrap? Where is all the scrap? Extract. You should be insert. I feel like Soren was messing with my stuff. Soren, were you messing with my UU matter machine? No. No. Or no. no. Oh, wait. The scanner? Uh, no. The mass fab. No. Okay, I'll trust you, perhaps. It's 
It's interesting that you chose not to Good, it did stop. And then it's gonna run again. And then we'll turn it off. Cool. All right. Um, off camera time work. I'm going to make five more steam boilers and 10 more liquid heat exchangers. How am I for this distilled water stuff? Okay, we're getting there. All right, so five more steam boilers and 10 more liquid heat exchangers. Be right back. All right, guys, we are back. And I think I've got everything ready here that I wanted to get ready. And there's a slime jumping my way. So up and down should be properly filtered. What I decided to do is just have these guys set up like so and filter them on the up and down. Oh, these giant slimes. We need to avert an obelisk these things quicker than... Quicker than it's happening. You just need one slime. You don't need all the sizes. Oh, you don't? That's good. Um, soul vial. That's what I want. Ta-da! Soul vial slime. I still find it really annoying that Minecraft prioritizes hitting the block behind the mob rather than the mob itself. Uh, it just seems silly to me. What? Like when you swing your sword. I, I find that more often than not, I am like just hitting the block. That's what we call aiming. No. You said it yourself that you're a terrible sniper. <laughs> I mean, I may have said that, but <laughs> I feel like I shouldn't need to snipe. So I think there is a small net loss of distilled water, by the way. Believe it or not. 221, Ooh, one mil bucket per tick. What's that? You said believe it or not, but I don't know what you said before that. Have you noticed a small net loss of, war of distilled water? Uh, I should probably go check. We'll see what player has to say about this. Because there is. All right, so in theory, what I should be able to do, so you, yeah, there's definitely a net loss, right? And they're not on, but I had about, oh, wait. Uh, okay, no, I can't confirm that for you, actually. The other thing is 90 and I looked at it, it's like actually I have an extra zero there. Any more ender conduits? No, I'm just gonna remove these. Do you need more distilled water? Am I the take the explosion for the yes? I mean, I'm okay at the moment. I mean, I have a lot. I'm okay. Are you sure? Pretty sure. Last time I said I'm fine with all the explosions, it kinda went badly. Everything's fine. We're fine now. Everything's okay. Are you sure? I don't know about this. It's a little hard to see, but everything's okay right now. I, I don't know if I believe you. See? Everything's just... fine. Everything's okay. just fine. <laughs> Everything's just fine. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's fine. 
fine. What are you <laughs> saying, Soren? I don't know. You're wearing a hazmat suit. I'm concerned. I'm turning off my reactor at the moment because I want. I want. I decided I want hot coolant to stop being produced at the moment. Okay, so just to be clear. So hot coolant should be running out across the board because we are out. All right, all out of hot coolant. Little explosions maybe right now, by the way. <laughs> nope, we're good. We're good. We're good. Fine. Oh, ah. Little ones. Just little tiny, tiny little explosions. Not that, that was a little weird. Nothing to worry. It was just a tiny one. There's a tiny one. Tiny one. Typically, it's me. There's either an explosion or it's big. There's no tiny explosion. All right. So that should all be good. So in theory, we should actually be up and ready. That's all. That that is actually all I need to do. I mean, if I wanted to, like I I did this so that I didn't have to worry about doing this part of it. But we'll do this now. Disabled, so that I can save myself some ender conduits. All right, so that should be cool. That should be cool. That's no longer needed on the bottom. So how's that look? Pretty neat. Uh huh. Do you like it? I'm just worried for explosion, but that looks nice. Okay. Well, as long as you think it looks nice. Yeah. Give me a few little explosions while we start producing more hot coolant. Okay, I'm gonna turn off the hot coolant feed so that it just produces a drum worth. So it should be producing lots of hot coolant right now because I've got two reactors producing it. So now we've got, so I wanna have about, this can hold what, 10, I wanna say? So, how are we for coolant in total? Hmm. So that should be good. Uh, he walked off, so that might be a little bit of time. <laughs> All right, so in theory, we should have a net gain of hot coolant once these fill up. Um, we should not have a net loss. No explosions, yay. I mean, not yet. Yes, oh, great, okay. So we're producing between four and six. So we should still be producing 750-ish. Yeah, on average 780, 780-ish. That sounds, that sounds about right, 780. Oh, that's including this guy. So let's take this out of the equation. So now we're producing around 750, right? So once the steam boilers here heat up to 375, which will be about a minute, we should see an increase. And this will tell us if the, the steam turbines can handle the increase, the doubling the amount of steam we're producing. Cool. Um, and as far as this thing goes, we're sitting around 87-ish. So we're gonna keep an eye on this as well and make sure that we don't have a net loss at any point. But so far we're not gaining coolant, which is pretty much what we're looking for. Remember, we'll occasionally shut these guys off and turn them back on. And once they're off, like they stay off until they fill back up with coolant, but that's okay. I think we're gonna be in good shape here. So yeah, this thing will probably turn off. Making a lot of energy. What's that? <laughs> You're not making very much energy very quickly. I mean, I'm not cheating. Uh, neither am I. <laughs> I mean, you're exploiting. Yes. <laughs> I'm doing it the legit way. All right, here we go. What? Boom. I see two hot steam. That's what we're putting out. So are we now? Nice. 4,000. That's making 1,000. That's making 500. I think we're making 1,500. Yeah, not bad. Are you 
Alright. Not a problem. Player came to visit. I noticed. Alright, and then um, copper cabling. That's interesting. Uh, distilled waters. Yep, working on it. All right. <laughs> I don't like explosions. Explosions imminent. <laughs> Did I get it? You got it. Nice. So are we officially making 1500 EU per tick? Says a thousand. So this is making five hundred, and this is making a thousand. Thousand five hundred. So this should be fifteen hundred EU per tick. Uh, let me try something. Can you move those two wires that are connected to the MFSU? What do you mean? Just move move the insulated cable. Like, remove it, break it. I want a player to see it first. All right. Back in a minute, guys. Troubleshooting. All right, guys, we're back. Um, so, player explained it to me. The kinetic generator is power tier three, which means it can only output 512 EU per tick. Um, and this is currently trying to output a thousand, which is more than 512. And there's only one output phase, so we can't use multiple lines. So I don't think there's any way to make this output more. Fluid regulator Fluid. plus distributor to make up here. Well, I was gonna put my steam turbine, I was gonna put the superheated steam turbine here. Ooh. I don't know if this will work, but we're gonna find out. And then the kinetic generator here, and we will shift click that. And then this just needs this guy. And I'm going to copy the settings on the superheated steam one, which is this one, I believe. This is extracting distilled water. This is extracting steam. So this is the one we want to copy. And then this is just a test for now. I will make this look better in a minute. Or not. Everything's okay. <laughs> Is everything exploding over there again? So this will extract steam and insert. <laughs> Sorry, what'd you do? <laughs> You're over there on your own, buddy. I, I guess the fire might be over there. Did I turn this? Oh, the MFSU filled up. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> so now the big question is will this 
Explosions are normal. This is producing between four and six hundred. This is producing between four and six hundred. It is splitting the steam, I believe. Nice. So I think now we're getting what I want to get, which is fifteen hundred. Minus a little bit for loss, but that's okay. So everything should actually be behaving at this point, I believe. That works quite well. Okay. So it is splitting the steam, which is nice, because it means I don't have to rebuild. I would have to split the conduit lines for the steam if this did not evenly distribute the superheated steam between the two steam turbines. Um, so I'm glad that it does, because otherwise we'd have to have one set of liquid heat exchangers and steam boilers going to one steam turbine slash turbine compare. Why am I out of... Oh, right. Probably because this filled up. Correct! Hooray! Alright, so we're gonna let this run again. Everything's gonna kick on. We're producing lots of power. And uh, I'm quite happy right now. I'm quite pleased with the power production we have going on. Uh, so I'm gonna wrap up the episode. That's what I'm gonna do. Uh, so Devil20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. As always, take it easy.